We all know that in order to achieve your best marathon performance, you need to fuel your body with the best foods, including what to eat and when to eat. But there's a problem. The enormous importance of strength training throughout a fast. You should always be training in a fed state. I've ranged everywhere from like mostly plant-based, low carb, keto, to like mostly animal-based. You don't want to start a marathon only 50% carb loaded. It's just not worth it. I know, it's confusing. And trust me, this is one of the hardest topics I've ever covered when taking something so complex and piecing it all together. And none of these tips I'm about to share would make any sense unless I started with a quick explanation on what actually happens when you eat foods such as carbohydrates. After it breaks down in the stomach, it enters the bloodstream as a sugar known as glucose. This triggers the body to release insulin, which grabs the glucose and carries it to the muscle to be stored later for energy. Remember this process because it becomes very important later in the video. Traditionally, there is a nice balance as the body handles the rise and fall of insulin. But in this day and age, with processed and sugary foods, alongside constant snacking throughout the day, the human body rarely gets a break from the circulating insulin, which can lead to serious metabolic consequences, mainly due to these sugars creating inflammation. So the reason that the liver gets sick when you're eating too often is because inflammatory markers are increased. What seems to be the big factor in medicine now is what they call chronic low-grade inflammation. And it seems to be the thing behind all chronic disease. Things that promote inflammation is one is sugar. People sort of say, oh, yeah, we know about sugar, but starch is okay. You know, the bread and rice and pasta, that's okay. Well, the problem is that bread, rice and pasta are starches. What is a starch? A starch is just a bunch of glucose molecules stuck together. The gastrointestinal system breaks down that starch into glucose. It's the same as sugar is. This is where the proposed benefits of intermittent fasting come in. And research suggests it can prevent metabolic diseases and improve cardiovascular health while giving the body an opportunity to cleanse our cells of damaged proteins and other cellular junk, allowing our cells to run more cleanly and make them more resilient to stress. And if we follow the research recommendations, extending your fasting windows by avoiding food a few hours before and after sleep and allowing yourself a small 10 hour eating window throughout the day will create this cleansing effect. Okay, so up until this point, things are looking pretty good for intermittent fasting, but here's where it gets controversial because so far this has been generic health advice for the general population. But remember, this video is performance-based, which is why we then come across health professionals saying this. So in the athletic population, I never recommend intermittent fasting or any type of fasting. And the main reasons for that is both the pre-run nutrition and even more so that recovery nutrition afterwards. To wrap our heads around the performance side, we need to learn about our two major fuel systems, which are carbs and fats. When training at low intensity, our body will primarily use fats or ketones as fuel which is a lot more efficient compared to carbs, our second fuel source, which is used at higher intensities. Think of it like a hybrid car. When you are on a long, slow car ride, you can coast along on electricity just as you can with fats. But if this casual drive turns into a drag race, you'll need to immediately stomp on the pedal and switch to petrol as fuel, which you burn through a lot quicker, just like you would with carbs. But because these carbs are so important, not only from a high intensity standpoint, but also for recovery after exercise, it's no wonder why some health professionals strongly advise against fasting. When someone is intently training and really trying to push their fitness to the next level, if we are continually missing that recovery window, we're just in a completely catabolic state. So we're breaking down that muscle mass that is trying desperately to rebuild itself. So I just think it's a huge detriment to people's performance and then also recovery. Now, I should point out, I'm not a dietitian, but I'm only sharing this information based on my podcast interviews, the books I've read, and the research papers that I've uncovered. So my opinions are subject to change. But while there are pros and cons for fasting, all dietitians that I've spoken to seem to agree that we as a species eat too much and too often. So while we should be cautious when fasting around intense exercise, 
Avoiding things like snacking and finding suitable fasting windows throughout the week that doesn't impact our training can be a safe and beneficial practice. And if you wanna try exercise while fasting, make sure you start with short, low intensity exercise while looking out for red flags, as Megan suggests. If we're really sore, if we're really sluggish, if we're tired, if we feel like our blood sugar's dropping, we can't concentrate, like things like that would be red flags. But as long as we're paying attention to those things and noticing how our body feels, you know, I just really encourage people to tune into their body, how it's functioning, their mind, how it's functioning, and just is this the best approach? And when it comes to your long and hard workouts, it's best to strategically fuel yourself so you can perform and recover to the best of your ability. Even Peter Bruckner, who wrote the book on low carb diets, recommends planning carb intake around your workouts. During the week, you, you might have some carbs on your big training day, and the other days you're low carb and you get your body learning to burn fat. And then on game day, you might just supplement with some carbs. Now we're adding another layer here. Like I said at the start, this topic is complex, but I promise I'll bring it all together nicely at the end, because so far we've learned the benefits of fasting and the benefits of fueling before and after exercise. But Peter just mentioned, you can leverage a low carb diet and train your body to use more fat as a primary fuel source. And this is actually possible by improving your metabolic flexibility. But what is exactly metabolic flexibility? So that would be adapting your fuel selection based off of fuel availability. That's Dr. Will, a running scientist who has an amazing YouTube channel and literally wrote the research on this particular topic. We're running a marathon. We run out of carbohydrates. If we're really metabolically inflexible, we can't buffer any of that loss of energy from the carbohydrates with fat. Now, if we converse that with a metabolically flexible individual, they are going to be able to buffer a large portion of the loss of energy from carbohydrates with fats. Remember that hybrid car I mentioned earlier? Imagine you're halfway through your drag race and you run out of petrol. Well, a metabolically flexible engine can redirect some electricity to maintain the higher intensity. Whereas an inflexible engine has no choice but to downshift back to cruise control, which marathoners will come to know as hitting the wall. But how do we become more metabolically flexible? The easiest way is going to be fasted training sessions. So you're going to enhance fat oxidation, which then stimulates an adaptation to further enhance the infrastructure metabolically for more fat oxidation. So again, we have a slight difference in opinions because we started with Megan saying not to exercise fasted, but Dr. Will now recommends trying to fast during your aerobic training sessions to help your energy systems become more flexible. And on top of that, he says there are two more ways we can enhance your metabolic flexibility. So then we have carbohydrate restriction within our diet, and then we have carbohydrate restriction within our long training sessions. I understand if it's now sounding a bit too confusing, but I promise this is all about to come together and starts with acknowledging that everyone's physiology is different and everyone has individual responses to different diets and fasting conditions, as Peter explained. Everyone's different. You know, some people can manage on no carbs, some people low carb, some people need more carb, but it's certainly an interesting concept. For example, Stacey Sims has drawn a line in the sand and strongly believes no woman should be fasting because men and women are different. But this is not just about gender. Everyone is unique. They have their own physiology, microbiome, genetic makeup, and hundreds of other individual characteristics. So here is my attempt to wrap this all up in a neat little bow. Think of everyone's individual responses falling on a spectrum. On the right are those who respond really well to no carbs at all. These individuals can fast during their long aerobic runs and can thrive on a low carb diet and long fasting windows throughout the week. But these people would probably still be fueling with carbs before high intensity workouts and races. Then we have the mid range group who respond best with some carbs. This group might try fasting during short easy runs as well as fasting 
two to three times per week without impeding on any long or hard training sessions. Then on the left of the spectrum are those who don't respond well to any type of carb restriction. These runners would strategically fuel around every workout of their week. So my best advice is this, if you have never tried fasting and wanna give it a go, start at the left of the scale and every four to six weeks, reevaluate. Are there any red flags? And is your body telling you you're heading in the right direction? If so, then slowly slide further along the scale. And with enough time and patience, you'll find your own unique sweet spot and can reap the performance and health benefits. But no matter where you are on the scale, make a conscious effort to avoid constant snacking throughout the day and limiting processed foods and refined sugar as much as possible. So it seems the further right you are on the scale, carbs become less important as your body becomes more accustomed to burning fats. Which is why it surprised me when I asked Dr. Will this question. Would you still carb load? Yes. What you're doing by carbohydrate loading for anyone is you're just giving yourself the best possible situation or metabolic environment with high glycogen stores to perform optimally. We'll get to the perfect way to carb load in one second, but I hope by now I've already proven to you how valuable this channel can be for you and your running goals. Producing and editing this all myself takes a lot of hours and a zero cost way to say thanks is by hitting that subscribe button. And once you become a subscriber, you automatically become a Run Smarter Scholar and have me as your personal running coach and physiotherapist to answer any question you leave down in the comment section. Also, personally, seeing you become a subscriber gives me an indication I'm doing something right and gives me the motivation to continue pumping out content. You don't even need to hit pause on this video. Just click on the subscription button below and welcome to the Run Smarter Tribe. Now, we've all heard about carb loading. But it's only been recently, now that I've been interviewing professional runners on the Run Smarter podcast, I can see now how extreme it needs to be. So white bread, white rice, um, popcorn, and just load up on that for the next couple of days. A lot of rice, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We actually start that four days out. For the three days leading into the marathon, I err on the side of eating too much. Every marathon I've started and I actually feel overweight, like you actually feel heavy. You don't want to start a marathon only 50% carb loaded. It's just not worth it. Remember that insulin I mentioned earlier that transports the carbs to the muscle for storage? Well, carb loading involves saturating the muscle and filling it to full capacity so you have a full fuel tank ready for race day. And as Dr. Will suggests, no matter where you are on this scale, carb loading is an important step when preparing for a marathon. The clinical recommendations say to start carb loading three days before your marathon and consume 3.6 grams per pound of your body weight per day. So if I weigh 150 pounds, I need to consume 540 grams of carbs per day or 180 grams in each of my three meals. You can easily search for charts online that detail how many carbs are found in certain types of foods. But typically for me, it would look like this. But we have another problem. Because while fueling before intense exercise and filling up your fuel tank before a race sounds great, a lot of us develop upset stomachs when trying to fuel for optimal performance. But did you know you can train your gut to consume more carbs before and during exercise. This will obviously give you a huge advantage when it comes to running a marathon. Luckily, I have a video with easy steps on how to tolerate a full fuel tank right here.